Hi friends, this is David Vallade here with Alta Vista Technology here to talk about the incredible new feature that's just been unleashed from Sage Intact around AP bill automation. This has been talked about for some time and I'm just so excited that it finally made its way out into the wider world that I wanted to put out a video as soon as it was out so that people could take advantage of this and really leverage all the power that's coming with this. All right, so what am I talking about? Well, let me show you. I have an environment here, a little test environment, and I have the ability, as we all do, to go look at payables, which I'm about to do. Here I am, I can see a lot of things here, and this these two columns are a little interesting, as is this button at the top. So previously, if you wanted to do something, it was possible to do something where you could use some great marketplace partners to automate your accounts payable process. You could let your vendors email in or you could upload a PDF version of an invoice, pull it into your system. And once you've done that, the system can code it and then route it um, or code it and put in the right dollar amount and do all sorts of work for you without you having to actually key a thing. So then our work in, in accounts payable is more on review and not so much on just brute force data entry. Really exciting stuff. This is now part of the core product. So I've enabled this environment and I've enabled that in this environment. And let me go to work right now. Let's make an example. So I have a security, I go to accounts payable like so, and I'm gonna click this little upload button. We've all, the little upload button is new. We've already had the import button, but now we have the ability to upload. And I have a choice. I'm at the top level here and it's saying, what, what company do you wanna put that in? I will leave it on that default. And you can see I can upload up to 30 documents at a time in one of these types of formats. It just so happens that I have off to the side a just such a sample uh, format, just such a sample document. And I'm going to take that and I'm gonna drag it over here and I'm gonna put it right there. Successfully uploaded one file. Note this choice here. Do you want to have a single line item that summarizes the total or a line, you know, well, as many lines as there are on the source document? I'll take the latter just to be a little bit more interesting and you can see my document. And you can see I called this National Grid Invoice 10016. Interesting. All right. So I'll hit Create Bills. And now the system is hard at work. All right. So what I can do is uh, this state here. We're used to seeing draft and posted and all paid, all sorts of different options there. There's a new status, or I'm sorry, a new state we'll be seeing. It's called Analyzing. So if I were to filter on that, for example, I could see all the documents that are being analyzed at the moment, and it is just the one. So it does take a moment for the system to go hard to work in reviewing what I just threw at it. And in just a moment, if I hit refresh here a couple of times, it should be done processing and we'll see what I did with it. Okay, I just refreshed and I don't see anything else here for analyzing. So let's just take a look at everything. And uh, now if I were to look at this, I would look differently. I would search for anything where my source was a bill upload and the state was draft. And why do I say draft? Because um, nothing gets posted without our consent here. So I see there's a document here and it's dated 220, which is interesting. And it's $100. And this is dated 11, or excuse me, the bill number is 116. Now, I have done multiple uploads here ahead of time, ahead of this video, so that's why I can see different documents. But uh, I'm gonna take a look at this last one. That was the document I manually uploaded a second ago. So let's see what it looks like here. I'm gonna hit view on that. And I can see a transaction. And I can see an attachment. And I can see, ooh, some entries. This is great. So let's take a look at what this means in a little bit more detail. There's an option within the, your preferences. If you go to click on your name up here in the user preferences, user by user, you can opt to look at things in line, which is a lot of fun for me. So I'm going to do that. So I've turned that on. It's a checkbox setting that anyone can enable or disable um, based on um, what they pick up here in that little setting. But here I can see, if I make it bigger, um, this is the PDF I uploaded. So 
what does it look like here? It looks like it says, and I had a lot of fun making this, by the way, it was good times. Um, but here I can see National Grid. I can see your home for all the best grids anywhere. And I put two line items on it, office supply, grade, grids. Those were $60 and my lesser grids were $40. And this invoice is totaled to be $100. So what happened was I sent this in and the system here, I uh, did some intelligent things it did what they call optical character recognition. So it went and it saw the name National Grid on that PDF and correctly picked the vendor that I have set up in my demo company called National Grid. So it did that for me. Also, it saw that this document over here uh, was invoice number 10016, which also corresponds to the number that it supplied for me. So this is all working out great so far. Couple things I see that it didn't do, however, is uh, I have, it looks like on this invoice from the vendor, uh, they said that their terms were net 30 on the document that they sent me. But in my system, I had the terms of net 45. So when there was some sort of conflict, the system just went with whatever I had internally on my vendor setup. Now I can change that. I can hit edit on this document. It's not yet posted. I can go ahead and correct that and make that net, net 30 if that's what it needs to be. But it took what the vendor setup was, and I think it, given the choice, that's probably what it ought to do. So I agree with that. Also, I can see that there was a PO number on this document, and the system did not put that on my payable. So this might be getting um, enhancements rapidly as we speak, but at least on this example, on this little rendition of an import here, it didn't pull it in, uh, the data into my system. So if it's something I care about, I would have to key it. Um, another thing that I like what it did about, um, that it handled well, is I had those two lines. Remember I said to bring it in in detail. So I had one line for $60, one line for $80. And it had even descriptions here, office supply and lesser grids. And those both came through just fine into the system. So this is all great. Now, what was interesting to me when I first wanted to test this is, okay, how is the system gonna know what to use for my GL accounts? and what to use for uh, my location or my department or whatever dimensions I wanted to use. And the first time I tested this, it was actually interesting to me. It brought it in and it used an allocation. And I thought, wait a minute, what is it doing? Well, the, what had happened was the system was looking back in my history. So Intact was looking at what other documents I'd previously uploaded. And from that, it was pre-filling in the different dimensions um, that I'd used for that vendor previously so that I could take it. That was pretty clever. I did not expect that. That was pretty good. So I'd used a lot of invoices for this demo vendor where I had three lines and I'd had utilities for the first two and I'd used the admin department and so on. So it, it did that for me to kind of pre-fill everything. And yet again, I'll mention I can hit edit like so. I'll hit edit on this document and I'll maybe zoom in a little bit. And I can come down to any of these lines. And if I say, oh, that's actually a different account number or a different department, of course I could fix this. And when I'm finally done, when everything is as it should be, I can post away. Now I say post, but don't forget we can also have um, approvals turned on. So someone could, instead of posting, hit submit and then have this document routed for someone in management to look things over. That is not bad. So I can upload things and off I go and I get them in the system. There's also another option though I'll mention. So you can see for my source, there's uh, in addition to bill upload, there's also email. That's right. So what you can do in addition to what I just did there in that uh, example is I can go into accounts payable, I can go into my setup and I can go into my configuration. And if I scroll down a little bit in the setup, I will see an option once this is enabled so that says bill automation settings. And there is a configuration here for emailing, uh, for email services. If I click this configure, the system, I'll, I'll get to see the email address that the system is associated with me. So I can give that email address out to my vendors. It could be a top level email address. It could be a address associated with one specific entity. I like top level whenever I can do that, but whatever we want to do there, you can, um, whatever you see fit, you can give that out to your vendors. And then your vendor could email in the, their vendor invoices and they would just show up back where I was a second ago over my accounts payable screen. So my workflow radically changes here. Instead of coming in here and saying, hey, I'm going to uh, key in all these invoices that I received in the mail. 
or through an email even, I'm instead going to either upload the ones that I choose to, to pull in or distribute a separate address to my, um, to my vendors and let them use that. So really intriguing, really powerful stuff coming to light here. This is kind of a little bit of a rapid response video, wanting to get this out right away so that people could take advantage of this functionality and really put it to good use. If you have any questions about this or anything else with Sage Intact, please feel free to give us a shout over at altavistatech.com. Thanks, everybody.